Miss Emily here, and I just finished reading The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Philippe. This is actually a fairly new release. It just came out this past February. You'll find it in our teen section, so be aware that there are some more adult themes throughout the story. Norris's parents are divorced. His father has remarried and has a baby, so he doesn't really, quote, have room for a teenager, unquote. Norris lives happily with his mom in Montreal, Canada, until she takes a professor position at the University of Texas in Austin. Norris is not happy about the move and is in complete culture shock. His mother promises him that he has to give Austin a try. Try to make friends. Try to get along with the teachers, she says. And if they're going to pack it all up and go back to Canada, which she is actually putting on the table, then you have to actually try, she says. Norris has two years of high school left, then he can go back to Canada for college as planned. He had only ever attended two schools in his life, Holy Spirit Elementary and College Francais Secondary, and he had seen enough of Judith's old movies, she was a bit of a collecting junkie and had a lot of free time, to grow up with a healthy fear of the American high school. Back to the Future, The Breakfast Club, Dazed and Confused, Can't Hardly Wait, 10 Things I Hate About You, Mean Girls, Napoleon Dynamite, The Karate Kid, not to mention the ad nauseum TV reruns of Freaks and Geeks, Beverly Hills 90210, Gossip Girl, Friday Night Lights, and everything else in between. If the flavors were different, pack of quirky outsiders here, ruthless, borderline, feral, popular girls there, it all mostly amounted to one thing, in versus out. And Norris Kaplan, black, French-Canadian Norris Kaplan, had no delusion about where he would fall in that demarcation. Here in Austin, the point was to not enter the field at all. Norris didn't want to join a band of misfit rascals, overthrow the school hierarchy, go to sectionals, upend the bully, or kiss the prom queen. No, what he needed to do was endure. 730 days with room for summer vacations, Christmas breaks, and the occasional long weekends, that was the number. He took solace in that fact, really. All he had to do was make it through this day for the giant counter he kept in the back of his head to update to 729. Easy. Only it turns out enduring wasn't so easy after all. Norris couldn't seem to stop drawing attention to himself, which is easy to do when he's a black French Canadian in Austin, Texas, who loves ice hockey, has a sarcastic, witty sense of humor, and a mouth that usually speaks two sentences too many. He soon finds himself the target of the football team after accidentally making eye contact on the bad side of the cheerleaders after being falsely accused of spying on and taking pictures of them and only offending them further with his sarcasm and witty comebacks. This interaction, however, does introduce him to Artie, a girl of Indian descent who's aloof and into photography. Norris is smitten. One day, Norris is approached by one of the loners asking him for ice skating lessons after finding a, finding a flyer posted advertising that he offered such a thing, a totally embarrassing attempt by his mother to help him make friends. With nothing better to do, Norris begrudgingly agrees. Soon, he also needs a job, and after scoping out all of the places in town, he finds the local barbecue place to be the least horrible. After securing the job, he finds out that the owner of the restaurant is father to one of the cheerleaders he previously encountered. Over the course of their relationship, though, he does find her to be oddly helpful when he needs it, although they would not consider each other friends, at least not at first. After developing a relationship with Artie, though they're not officially boyfriend and girlfriend, and slowly growing a group of true friends as well as an ice hockey team, Norris finds himself asking, when had he turned into an actual American cliche? And when exactly had he started liking it? So again, that is the Field Guide to the North American Teenager. You can find it in our teen section. Uh, I would definitely say that this book is PG-13. Uh, there is cursing and some mild sexual themes. Uh, there is also um, talk of, of underage drinking and discussion of suicide and mental health. Uh, I would recommend this book for grades 9 and up. I hope you check it out.